أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم everyone so uh, إن شاء الله in the, over the next few sessions over the next few short sessions إن شاء الله we'll, we'll be covering the issue of migration um, so I'll just share the screen here so that we can have a look at the PowerPoint presentation um, okay so the, this is based on a book that I've compiled or a booklet, it's very small, that I've compiled while I was doing some research on the issue myself. So it was dedicated, first of all, first of all, it's been dedicated to Hajj Qasim Sulaimani and Abu Mahdi uh, Al-Muhandis, um, Rahmatullah Alayhima, who were martyred on the 3rd of January, 2020. So if we can just recite a very quick Fatiha ba'da salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad upon their souls. Now this book you can uh, uh, download from the practicalislam.online slash migration um, website, or just if you go to practicalislam.online, or you can share it amongst yourself. You don't, it's free, you don't have to pay anything for it, um, but it will help in collating everything. So what we'll be going through over the next few sessions will be based on the research that I did uh, during uh, the time that I needed to find the answer to this, to a very important question, uh, which we'll get to uh, very shortly. But to start off with an ayah from the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna ladhina amanu wa ladhina hajaru wa jahadu fi sabilillahi ulaika yarjuna rahmatallah, wallahu ghafurun rahim. But the believers and those who immigrate and struggle in God's way, those have hope of God's compassion and God is all forgiving, all compassionate. This is in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 218. The misdaq of the other shahid of the ayah is, Alhamdulillah, we're all mu'mineen. So he's talking to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us. And then he describes those who who are believers, who have faith, and the ones, not only that they have faith, but they also migrate and struggle in the way of Allah. They are the ones who have hope or seek the mercy of Allah. And we know that Allah is all forgiving and all merciful. merciful. So having Iman in of itself is not just enough. And just like prayers and fasting and hajj, and just like marriage and transactions in business, and just like struggling and jihad, all of these things make up what is the way of life that is or what we call Islam. Migration is nothing different. It is part of Islam. Migration itself is part of Islam. You cannot take migration away from Islam and still consider yourself to be a Muslim. So it's a collection um, of information that I've covered in the hope of answering the question, what is my obligation right now? Now, I started collating this information after I moved to Qom, to the holy city of Qom in Iran. And the reason why I started collecting this information and starting looking for the answer to that question is because people continue to tell me that I needed to return to my home country to Australia. Why? Because I needed to pay the zakat of the ilm, of the knowledge that I've came, of gained, that I have to uh, do tablil. And so it was very important for me to find the, the answer. And regardless of the uh, answer that I have uh, obtained as a result of this research, I was going to do it. So I was trying to be as open as possible to this. And uh, regardless of how I felt personally about whether I wanted to stay in Qom or whether I had to go back, I would have done exactly what it is that the, the answer to this question would have been. So what is my obligation right now is the question that we're going to uh, answer or hopefully answer, at least give you the tools to be able to answer for yourselves. So brothers and sisters, moving forward, this is what we should be uh, thinking about. Despite our own personal choices, our own levels of comforts or comfortable spaces, we need to ask ourselves, what is my obligation? What is your obligation? 
Okay, so it's easy to say like your obligation right now is to fast because it's the holy month of Ramadan. It's to pray because it is time for prayers. It's to pay khums because you have excess income. These are all fairly easy things, even though it's difficult to start off with. It's difficult to fast at the start. It's difficult to go to Hajj for the first time. It's difficult to pay khums because you're taking away so much money from your bank account and suddenly it's dropped. Um, so it's difficult to, to do that, especially if it's your first time. And especially if you still have a connection to that, for example, to the, to the money. And even more, especially if you don't understand why you're doing it. But if we understand why we're doing it, it helps. This is on page uh, 34 and I number 30, uh, 34 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, lest you hate something, it is good for you. And lest you love something, but it is bad for you. Okay, so Allah knows and you do not know. And that's repeated um, in a number of surahs. So for example, in Surah An-Nisa. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, will give blessings in that thing that you may hate, that you may not like. So this is really about understanding what my obligation is right now and then fulfilling that obligation should that obligation fall upon me or upon you, regardless of how comfortable I am or how set I am in the place that I'm living right now. Now, so what are we going to be covering in, the, in, in these sessions, inshallah? I've listed six items. So the introduction we've already done. Inshallah, we'll be doing, sorry, I'll, I'll be doing that very shortly. The definitions we'll be doing today as well. And we'll be starting on the Holy Quran and what migration has to say about, um, so, and what the Holy Quran says about migration. Sorry, I had that wrong way around. Then over the next few sessions, we'll continue what the Holy Quran says about migration, what the narrations say about migration, what the scholars say about migration, both the modern scholars and the classic. So from centuries ago, all up until the point of today. So if you have marja, uh, inshallah, we all have a marja. We need to know what the, the marja says about the issue of migration. And then finally, we'll be looking at fallacies. And fallacies are a huge issue in our decision-making process. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. If we are giving wrong information, if we obtain incorrect information, we cannot make appropriate choices. And so we need to first know what these fallacies are and know how to deal with them. Okay, so the introduction. First of all, we need to get a few um, <clears throat> ground issues up. The decision to migrate is not easy. Whether you have been in the process of migration yourself or your parents or our forefathers, that decision to migrate would not have been an easy one. It's a very difficult one, but it has jurisprudential implications. Whatever it is that you're going to decide to do, you're going to have to live with the jurisprudential implications of your decision. And this goes, of course, along with everything else, whether it's just whether it's about migration or just going to the movies, okay? There are jurisprudential implications for everything, every aspect of your life. What you eat, what you see, what you hear, what you do with your time, where you live, all of those has issues. Issues with regards to Islamic laws. And by the way, if you have any questions, please um, uh, interrupt me or put uh, type them out in, into the chat and I'll try to uh, answer them as we go. Now, there's no objection in migration in itself. Okay, nobody can tell you that it's haram to migrate. Whether you're going from the east to the west or the west to the east, or whether you're going from an Islamic country to a non-Islamic country or vice versa. It's not haram in itself. But the results of this migration may have an implication. And this is what we want to look at. What is the result of me living right here, right now? Do I have an obligation to do something about this or 
am I not able to do anything about it? If I'm not able to do anything about it, then then that's fine, I'm, I'm excused. But who is it that isn't able to do anything about it? And then what about my children? If I am able to and I decide to move or not to move, what about my children? What about my wife? What about my grandchildren? Do I have to worry about the, uh, them as well? So Islamic law has issues with regards to protecting yourself and your wife and your children and your grandchildren. And we're gonna look at that a little bit later, inshallah, as well. All right. Follow Allah Muhammad. So we're gonna get started a little bit into the meat of, of the issue, not quite. Before we get into the issue, we have to understand what two words mean. The first one is migration. And the second one is ta'arrub. What is migration and what is ta'arrub? So I'm just gonna stop the sharing here for a minute so you can um, so you can pay attention to what I'm saying. Because these two words will uh, mean uh, a significant amount. So we need to understand when I, when I say migrate, what I mean, and when I say ta'arrub, what do I mean? The first word is hijra, which in the lexical sense, uh, means migration. So hijra is migration. And according to Arabic dictionaries, it means moving from one place to another. So migrating from one place to another. Okay. Now, if you look at English dictionaries and they will have relevance to us as well, they, they also broaden, broaden that out. And even in Islamic, in, in Islamic narrations, we have that as well. That when we are migrating, it doesn't necessarily mean a geographical location. It could mean something else. So for example, um, a worm inside a body can migrate from one place to the other. I'm just gonna, there's someone who hasn't appeared at the speaker on here. I'm just gonna find out who it is. Uh, the person got muted, muted alhamdulillah. Ah, so sorry about that, continue. Okay, no, that's fine. So a worm can migrate from one part of the body to another, that's migration. You can migrate a computer system from one system to another. So for example, from a, a Mac to a Windows or from a Windows to a Mac, that's also migration. You can also migrate from social media platforms. It could be as simple as that. I'm gonna leave um, so-and-so platform and I'm gonna start using this particular platform. That's a kind of migration. A migration can also be you seeking to be at a higher level spiritually. That's a spiritual migration, okay? So really, in the sense of what we're looking at, there are two kinds of uh, migrations Islamically. One is a geographical one, and the second is a spiritual one. The spiritual one should be a constant migration. We should be doing this on a daily basis, accounting ourselves to make sure that we are spiritually migrating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is limitless. We can never stop migrating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other kind is the geographical -like, uh, migration, which is used to help our spiritual migration. Sometimes we need to geographically move in order to spiritually help our, uh, our, uh, our souls to migrate spiritually. Okay, at-ta'arrub, the second word that we have is called at-ta'arrub. Now, ta'arrub in itself refers to people who uh, are Bedouins effectively. Al-A'rab are the, are the people who are Bedouins. They're not living in cities. They don't have a constant house or a, a dwelling or an abode to live in. They constantly move within the deserts. They're not in the center of the city. And so the term Ta'arrub has been borrowed from, from the Bedouins effectively to mean those who migrate away from Islam or migrate away from Allah or migrate away spiritually. So if you want to have a look at an antonym Islamically, you would have migration and ta'arrub. Migration would be that you're going to, uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're moving up spiritually, you're going to higher levels. And ta'arrub would mean migration in the negative sense. 
Okay. So it's migration in the negative sense. Al ta'arrub ba'da al hijra is haram. So if you move forward in your spiritual elevation, to let go of that spiritual elevation is problematic, right? So if you become Muslim, to become a non-Muslim is, is haram. To, to elevate yourself, to move to a geographical location so that you can spiritually grow is good. But at-ta'arrub ba'd al-hijra is problematic and it's haram. So at-ta'arrub ba'd al-hijra is the return of a person who is now a, a, a Muslim to their former state of ignorance. So effectively leaving the city center of knowledge of Islam, of spirituality, of nur or light, leaving the nur and going towards darkness, towards leaving the civilization of, of Islam, leaving that city and going out to where the Bedouins will have gone, into the deserts, okay? So that is what Tarub is. And I'll go back to sharing. That is the definition of Tarub. Now, this is a narration that I'd like to share with you here. It's a narration that applies to all parts of our life and not just about migration. The narration says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُحَاسِبْ نَفْسَهُ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ فَإِنْ عَمَلَ حَسَنًا أَسْتَزَادَ اللَّهُ وَإِنْ عَمَلَ سَيِّئًا أَسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُ أَسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ وَتَابَ إِلَيْهِ so this is from Imam Kadhim alayhi salam. It's in uh, Al-Kitab Al-Kafi in volume number two, page 453, if you would like to get the, um, uh, the full reference of that. What does the narration say? It says, not from us is the one that does not take account of their actions every day. In other words, he is not of our Shia, right? He is not of the Ahlul Bayt. He is not a follower of the Ahlul Bayt. And I say he, um, please forgive me, he as in he or she or they. So you are not of us if you don't do muhasab every day, if you don't do an accounting of your actions every day. And if you've done good, then, then you should seek the same from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that every good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you've done evil, then you should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent and know that every evil is from you, from yourself, from myself. So every good is from Allah, every evil is from myself, and we should do muhasaba on a daily basis. Now, that means we should do muhasaba with regards to this topic as well. So we can do muhasaba with regards to, did I do ghibah today? Did I backbite? Did I pay sadaqah today? Did I pray on time today? Uh, was I obliged to, fa to fast and did I do it properly today? Am I obliged to go to Hajj? Should I take action on that today? Am I obliged to pay Khums? Have I done that? Was, have I kept my tongue under control today? All these things are a constant or need a constant accounting. accounting. Migration is something else. In the location which I'm living in today, is it still appropriate for me to live? Now, perhaps you don't need to do this on a daily basis, maybe on a monthly or six monthly or even an annual basis. However, it should be at least something that you should be considering. Am I living in an appropriate place for myself, for my wife, for my husband? What about my children? What about my grandchildren? These are questions that we should be asking ourselves at least on a frequent basis. And the circumstances are very dynamic, brothers and sisters. This is a very important point. To migrate once doesn't mean that you've done your duty and that's it. You, you, it it's, it's a static issue. My parents migrated, uh, whatever reason it may be, for economic reasons, for family reasons, for religious reasons, for uh, due to war. Um, it could be for a number of reasons that our families have migrated and believe you me, it was a very difficult decision for them that they've migrated. But it's not 
a, it's not a, a constant. It's happened once and that's it. No, it's dynamic. Even if you yourself have migrated from one place to another, that doesn't mean that that's it, you've done your duty. You only need to migrate once. No, it's a dynamic state. It changes with time. A good and correct decision historically doesn't necessarily mean that it's still a good decision for you and your family today. It changes with time because times change. And the choices need to be made according to the changes, changing circumstances and opportunities of that particular time. Okay, so there was a war in my country. My parents had to move away. We needed to find sanctuary. Otherwise, we would have lost our lives. We were uh, abased or weakened. We were weak. We couldn't defend ourselves. We had to move. Okay, is there a war still now? No. Is the dictator still there? No. Why are you still in the country that you're in? If the reason has been removed, your obligations have changed. Now, Sayyid Sistani in his book, Minhaj al-Salihin, says that it is obligatory, and I quote, it is oblig obligatory to learn the jurisprudential issues that one encounters regularly, such as that of doubts and oversight in prayers, so that when one faces a situation in which there is an obligation upon them, they, they are aware of their obligations at the time in which they face it. Brothers and sisters, that means we can infer from that, we need to be aware of our obligation of when and if we need to migrate. Okay, we need to be aware of that. At least be aware of it. That's all we need to do. And should that arise, then we would be aware of our, our, our obligations and then we would be able to take action. And I do tell my children on a, con on a regular basis, if you find a better place, and I'm not suggesting that home is the best place, that's not what I'm suggesting. That's up to each individual to do their own research and to uh, find the best place for themselves. It could be even a change of suburbs within the same country, a change of states. It doesn't matter what, what, the, what the issue is. However, I, for example, we've decided to move to Qom. And I tell my children, if you find a better place than Qom for us to move to, for our Islamic and spiritual growth, let me know. We will look into it. And if we have to, we'll move. And that's what, um, and that's how the children should, inshallah, be taught. Now we have, Five minutes left, inshallah. We've done introductions and definitions. We will start on um, the Holy Quran for the next five minutes and then inshallah we'll continue um, next week. So the Holy Quran, an often quoted ayah of the Holy Quran for people who justify where they are and, and how they live, is this question, was not the earth wide enough? And it comes from uh, the, this particular ayah here, ayah in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 97. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna al-ladhina tawaffahumu al-malaikatu zalimi anfusahum qalu fima kuntum qalu kunna mustadafina fil ard qalu alam takun ardullahi wasi'a I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to read the rest of the ayah. I'll translate it. And those angels, and those the angels take while still they are wrongdoing themselves. So a group of people are wronging themselves. They're oppressing themselves. Now, they, obviously nobody's gonna wrong themselves deliberately, right? They're, they're, they are misguided or under a spell or are looking at an illusion. Whatever the case that may be, they're kidding themselves, right? And then those angels, when they take those, the souls of these people, the angels will say, in what circumstances were you? Fima kuntum, where, where were you? What were you doing? kunna mustadafin. They say, we were mustadafin. We were abased. This word abased means mustadafin, which means what? They were weak in the situation in which they were in, either financially or intellectually. In other words, they have got the wrong information 
or because of tyranny. So the borders are closed and you can't fly out because all the borders are closed unless you inject yourself with something. Anyway, they will say what? Kunna mustadafin fil ard. We were on the earth, we were weak, we were abased. The angels will say, was not God's earth wide enough for you? Now, this is where a lot of people will stop and just, they'll just stop uh, from reading the rest of the ayah. You say, why are you still in this country? If you know that it's an oppressive country, what if you know that your religion is being weakened? I say, no, 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 I'm okay. God's earth is... Uh, is why then I can I can فَإِنَّمَا تَوَلُّ فَثَمَّ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn your face, Allah is there. It doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter where the uh, where my family is, uh, because it's all up to my heart. It's up to myself. I can live my life as a Muslim wherever I am. Okay, sure. Let's read the rest of the ayah. أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً فَتُهَاجُرُوا فِيهَا but was not God's earth wide so that you might have immigrated in it? Such men, such people, their refuge shall be Jahannam or Jahannam or hellfire and an evil, an evil homecoming. Now there's a story behind this uh, about two people who refused to migrate with the Prophet and inshallah, uh, we will relay that story next week because I think our time is up. So next week, inshallah, what we'll do is we'll start off with this ayah and the story behind it. And then another ayah uh, that has Ardullahi uh, Wasi'ah as well. And then we'll continue from there. Ayahs of the Holy Quran, narrations, scholars, etc. And, and then we'll end up with fallacies and hopefully answer any questions that you have along the way. So... My time is up for now, for this session. If you have any questions, please, I'm at your service. Um, otherwise, I'm finished. Salah ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Uh, Sayyid, I have one question, but I'm, uh, yeah. I'm a little worried you might answer it in the future classes, but I'll, uh, I'll say it to you anyway. Um, if you will say yes. it in the future classes, you could just inform me and I won't waste sure. too much of your time. Um, let's say um, we're here and we can migrate to a country that's more... Um, uh, Islamic, let's say, more sp spiritually enlightening. Um, but we're also conflicted with the sense that, you know, our parents might disagree with it or they're afraid uh, for us or they're worried about us, especially at this age. What 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 do we do? Especially, you know, Allah uh, was uh, uh, And at the same time, Allah how many was migration. So what do you do in this? This is definitely a, a topic that we will be covering. It's uh, a, a very important question. Uh, yeah. You know, I want to do the right thing because Allah has commanded me to do the right thing. But we'll have to arm ourselves with the tools first. We'll have to arm ourselves with the information first before we can answer that question. Ita'atul walidain has an exception, which is Ita'atullah. So if you're... And, and, and the, and the largest hurdle is your own family and friends. When I decided to move to Qom, for example, the largest hurdle was my family and friends. Um, they were very afraid for me. They were very afraid for my future, for my children's future, for uh, financially, medically, uh, in terms of war. Um, they were like, you know, what are you doing? You're destroying your livelihood. You're destroying your everything. Um, so it is, it is. An important question, inshallah, we will, we will be covering it. However, just uh, very briefly, ita'atul walidain is absolutely wajib, okay? Unless they ask you to do something that goes against the ita'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we need to keep in mind, okay? Um, there's a couple of questions here as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, recording we've talked about. Have I misunderstood? Or were you saying that, for example, living in Qom and moving away from there is haram? Okay. At-ta'arrub al hijra is haram. And we'll, we'll talk about more about that. Who is it that can move back from an Islamic country to a non-Islamic country? Um, and for what purpose? 
uh, so that we will be will be talking about it is haram under circumstances it is mustahab under other circumstances it depends so we'll, we'll be we'll be covering that uh, is it recommended for a muslim displaced in a secular country due to an oppressor to return to his home islamic country once that oppressor has been deposed okay so the scenario as i as i see it from the question we have a Muslim displaced for in, a, in a secular country. So let's say, for example, um, there's a number of countries that we can mention, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, um, you know, Bahrain, all of these countries. Um, they can, we can name Afghanistan, wherever. War broke out, broke out Lebanon and Palestine. And the family was displaced and had to move into a secular country due to an oppressor. So for example, Iraq, we had Saddam Hussein and he was an oppressor, okay? Um, to, is it recommended to return to his home, to his Islamic country home, once that oppressor has been deposed? Again, this will depend on the, uh, once we are armed with the tools, we will need to ask our, the question again. What is my obligation right now? The reason for the for why I migrated away from that country, from that Islamic country, has been removed. Has been removed, right? So there's no war, or there's no oppressor, or whatever, whatever the reason was. And now I'm in a displaced, uh, in a secular country. Do I need to move back? Well, if you're in a secular country, what are you doing there? If you're in a secular country and you're, for example, um, and, and we'll get to all this, but just very briefly and you are propagating Islam and you can protect yourself. And this, this is the answer to all, pretty much all of these, right? And you can protect yourself and you can guarantee your um, religion and the religion of your family and your religion of your grandchildren. Then you can stay there, but you need to be able to protect your family. If not, and the reason why you migrated has, um, has been lifted, then, you need to ask yourself, what is my obligation today? And inshallah, once we arm ourselves, inshallah, we'll, um, we'll, get to the, we'll get to that answer. You'll be able to answer that yourself. I don't want to give you the answer. I want to give you the tools so that you can make that decision for yourself, inshallah.